Previously on The Bill. I'm going to see her with your help or without it. And the messier it is, the more the press will lap it up. You start tonight. Tonight? Well, that's going to mean a 24-hour straight shift. You're not seeing him, Abigail. You can't stop me. To show some respect. Look, we've better things to do. 149, go ahead. I need the van. I've got two suspects for taking and driving away. Yeah, all right, Gary, we're on our way. We are not worthy. Go home, now. Go on, beat it, she told you. Yeah, it's probably a reporter. Look, just, just... Stay at the back of the house and keep the curtains drawn, OK? I don't know. Half an hour, tops. As soon as I can, Abby, I promise. All right. OK. What? Report was outside your house? Yeah, I think it's Pritchard. Um, he's, uh, out front now. Oh, unbelievable. And is Abigail OK? Is she with someone? No. Look, I know I should be there with her, but I can't. I mean, I've, I've got mountains of catching up. Do the mountain one first. You stay here with the other one while we start this one out. They're cutting it to my hands. Are you playing a cue, lad? Sorry. Well, you went so cue last night. I put the bites to prove it. If you want flutter and eyelids and snigger and dead, you picked the wrong woman. Last night was the one off. Excuse me. And then his brother was standing around laughing. He said two other people cracked the car and ran off, but he had the keys in his hand and the engine was still red hot. I left him the keys. Hey, I had a really good sign, You can both carve another notch on the bedpost. What are you talking about? That's what you do, isn't it? I don't know. Is he? I mean, you might have been here before, but I haven't. Look, I don't want this to come out wrong. But you know when you're really looking forward to something and, and you get it and it's a letdown? Well, it isn't with you. Cassidy seems to be filling up at a rate of knots. What's happened? It's Friday night, Mum. Oh, I know what night it is. Well, the two angels and some of the bigger clubs are on a price war. You know, cheap beer. It's bringing all the young lads out. Oh, well, Barton Street's already shut. So maybe you can use the East Greenwich for overspill, all right? Well, don't just stand there. Get out there if they're so busy. Come on, chop, chop. Mum. Is there something wrong with this? No, Mum. Good. What have we got? We, Gov. Hmm. What's Ken found out? Well, so far, the only visitors to the building have been the uh, stolen vehicle squad and their backup. So, what have we learnt about our so called insider, Sid Wright? Well, he alternates between managing the offices out back and doing the security rounds. And they all have individual swipe cards for logging in at secure points around the building. Hmm. So, we have a man undercover to tell us what we could have found out in a two minute chat with management. Yes, and Ken believes that he's making progress, he's gaining Sid's trust. So did he talk family? Did Ken steer him towards the Fosters at all? Did he mention any of his other associates? Not yet. Then how is this advancing our investigation? Listen, Ken knows what he's doing, Gov. This is early days yet. Early days or not, I need progress to justify all this. 
Who robbed the building society and who took a shot at Des? Yeah, well, we've been through this, Gov. We get them on the next job and then we unwind it backwards. If there is a next job. Yeah, well, there's going to be because they're planning one. Well, so you keep saying. In what way exactly did Ken think he ingratiated himself with Sid? Well, apparently, they're both into horses. Oh, great. So we can look forward to a hot tip at Kempton, can we? <laughs> what are you looking at? One of the cars. Yeah, Ferrari 360 Medina. 110 grand, that is. Oh, it rides like a bullet and sounds like a jet. How would you know all that? Well, I read it in a magazine. 110 grand? That's obscene. No, it costs what it costs. We've got a Diablo in here, right? 190 grand. What's a car worth that doing in here? Yeah, well, profits from drug trafficking. Only the blokes appealed so it sits here till the verdict. Well, where is it then? Well, later, I've got a favour to ask. Hey? Well, can you couple for us? I'll be uh, 15 minutes, 20 max. Where are you going? Picking up some food. Well, what can you do when we knock off? No, I'll let it be run out by then. Well, if Dave checks in, tell him one of the cameras is playing up and I've got to tweak it, yeah? All right. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen. Never does. Let me out, he's been hurt. OK. I'll go down there and see if I can cut them off. You're from outside the two angels. Come over my shirt. Come here! You lost them. Yeah. How many did you say there were? About four of them. All bang into and they turned on me. How'd you get on? Oh, <laughs> ran out of luck down there. Yeah, they scarped through the gate. Sarge! Sarge! It's that kid from outside the club. He looks pretty messed up. Is he breathing? Barely. Get an ambulance, quick. Good grief. <clears throat> you sure you got enough food there? You having a party? Yeah, kind of. Am I invited? What's the special occasion, eh? I mean, uh, there's more than enough for two here. Friday night cards. Ah, now you're talking. What do you play? Don't you take your own advice? What advice? We get along a lot better without the questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, but this is cards. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's different. It doesn't count. Uh, it's a private game. It's over your head. How do you know what's over my head? It's private. If this was a continuation of an earlier fight, why wasn't it dealt with then? Not a fight, ma'am. It was more like rowdy behaviour. Rowdy? That's a bit of an understatement. Maybe in hindsight. Forget hindsight. Have you searched the scene yet? Reg and Gabriel are doing it. What about the suspect? Claims he's a victim too. Could be nonsense, could be true. Well, keep you away from this one. We don't want any cross-contamination of evidence, well, right? Your mates, yes, They're not my mates. They was drinking the two angels. I don't know them. How come you're all having a go at the lad that got turned over then? Cos he was legless, he was funny. Everyone in there was laughing, it's not as if we were doing it together. That's not what it looked like to me. Are you having a laugh? I got popped by the same ones as him. And how did the other ones get away? They just did, ma'am. Then maybe you should get back in the van and go and look for them, all right? Yes, ma'am. Was she having a go at you? <sighs> did Reg and Gabriel find anything? Uh, they found the tube tickets and a brick that they must have hit him with. It's not your fault, you know. Don't look after me, Des. I don't need us. How's Abigail coping? She's freaked out. How much have you told her? She knows you killed a child. But does she know I was a child when it happened? Yeah. Does she want to see me? She's in two minds. What about you? I hate the idea with every fibre of my body. No, wait a minute. You said that you... I know what I said. You asked me what I felt about it. What I do is another matter. And what are you going to do? Catch you tomorrow, mate, all right? Oh, hang on a minute. What? There you go. Have those on me, mate. 
Oh, cheers. Night, Ken. Oh, yeah, yeah, good night. Another female sergeant at Sarnell. Late 40s, well kept, you know, trim looking. But I've never heard June Ackland described as trim before. Ackland. Yeah, that's it. Someone at Hendon said I should try and latch onto her. Said she'd be a good mentor. Yeah, yeah. She's community safety now. You know she doesn't wear the uniform anymore. Say something to you back at the station. Jess, give it up. We don't need this. Look, you've got me all wrong. I wasn't trying to be killed. What I wanted to say, and I'm not very good with the words, is that when I unwrapped it, it was. it was brilliant. And if something's that good, well, it's got to be mutual, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. You weren't so bad yourself. So why are you seeing it like a one-night stand? I don't know. Well, don't. Because something like that, well, it's best repeated, not forgotten. Look, Reg is coming back now, shush. I want to take it on with me, but... Stop it, Des. It's a sin. It's adultery. You can't say that. Stop it. Please. I can't stop it. Don't know I know what I'm missing. Down the operating theatre. He's got a brain hemorrhage. Look, it's not your fault. That's the second time you've said that. Well, that's because it isn't. Which makes it sound like it is. What are you doing? What can I say? I'm a gambler. Yeah, well, I told you it's private. Is that private enough for you? Look, get this. I don't care how much money you've got on you. You're making me look bad showing up like this, right? I've got to be really. Who's careful. your girlfriend, Sid? The name's Ken. Well, Sid's busy. He's got a bet to make if he's staying in. Is there room for one more? Did you tell him about our little game? Mm -hmm. Hey? How much are you carrying? Enough. Who is he, Sydney? Well, he works for me down the police warehouse. Boy, are we playing or what? Mate from work, is he? Is he a loser like you? Go on, make that bet before my dad gets annoyed. So, are you a loser? Depends who I'm playing. Fold. Who's he? Fold. Fresh meat. C -c Cautious kick Ken. He's got oh. money burning a hole in his pocket, but. Sydney here's gonna vouch for him, aren't you, Sydney? Oh yeah. Well, he's a new guy at work, yeah. Barely know him. Well, what are we playing? Dealer's choice. It's like Lobo. Well spied Einstein. Grab a chair. Fold. <sighs> what a bunch of lightweights. Don't any of you stay in? Well, there's no point with you, we can see right through you. <laughs> Get us a beer, Sid. So, where are you from, Ken? Sun Hill. Local boy. It's what we like. Don't get him started. He's been banging on all day about how all the mosques used to be synagogues. Nothing wrong with a bit of history. Yeah, when there's nothing wrong with a bit of poker. Are we playing cards here or what? We are. Can't vouch for you. Eat with your mouth shut, you animal. He's <laughs> losing it already. <laughs> Let's play. What am I dealing? Well, if you weren't talking, yeah, come on. And he's in. What's the game, Kenneth? Mm, seven stud high-low. 
back to the wild? No, no, no wild cards. Of course, dealer's choice. It is. Wild cards is for kids. Shut up and play, Vince. Black twos is wild. Thanks. Do you, um, want me to wait? Or do you make any long way? Um, I'm not coming, Des. I'm not in the mood. It's been a hard night. All the more reason. I'm going home to my family. Another time. Right. Pair of turns to bed. Five. You're five. I'll raise you more than fifty. Two sevens? Shut up. Raise him. Don't tell me what to do. We've been here before, ain't we, Vince? Back the truck up. I'll lend you if you're short. Shut your mouth! Keep your voice down and play. It's you to bet. Six fifty, and I'll raise you three fifty more. Well, I don't have it. Borrow it. Well, that's not the normal rules of poker. I don't give a flying finger what the normal rules of poker are. See me or fold. But you know I haven't got it. So you're folding then, Sid. Sid, you want to lend your girlfriend some money? No? Anyone? See, so you're on your own in this company. You're not taking my money. <laughs> So, so what are you going to do about it? I don't know, but you're not having my money, not like this. Well, let's see you try and stop me. 350. Cost you five, win or lose. No, 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 you can't do that. I'll lend my own money to who I like. Those terms agreeable to you? Yeah, yeah, sure, thanks. You're welcome. I'll see you. Pair of tens. Two aces. You what? You were standing for an ace on the draw? No way, man, no way. Fools rush in. That's just well out of order. It's not even amateur, that's... It's ignorant! Thank you. Right, I'm out of here. Yeah, I think I'll make a move. Whoa, 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 you ain't walking out with my money. You're going to sit down, you're going to sit down, you're going to stay there till I've won every last penny back off you, you fat slob. You are. Sit your sorry ass down. Leave him alone, Vince. He stays. I'm sorry. My son's been watching too many movies. You don't win a pot like that and just get up and walk out. Vince is a straight. Leave him alone. You'll give him nightmares. He ain't leaving with my money. Ken. If I invite you back here again... Do you think you might grace us with your presence? And give my son the opportunity to recoup his losses? Of course. There you go. A compromise. <sighs> so, we'll be seeing you at one of our future games, then. Nice to meet you. Your mate Vince, he needs medication, mate. Oh, I, I said don't come. That's what I said, right? Private, plain as day. How much clearer than that can oh, I be? Oh, eh? right, calm down. Oh, you've got no idea, have you? Yeah, look, look on the brighter side, mate. If I won the last hand, I'd be well down. Look, this is for you. Go on, treat yourself. Go on, man, hey? Go on in your punk stick one on me, hey? Yeah, that's right. You think about it, eh? You think about it long and hard, because I've got them to back me up, and they're family, and they hurt people for a living. Do they? You want to come back and play again, eh? Grace them with your presence. Yeah, see what happens when you go down a few grand and you ain't got it. Why? What happens? 
You ever seen a hammer go through the back of somebody's hand? Eh? You'd sell your wife to get that money. And don't be fooled, Archie's worse than Vince. Oh, you idiot. I'm taking money off him in front of his dad. That's like asking for it. It was just a couple of hundred quid. Uh, it's about face, right? The amount don't matter. He won't forget you. He won't forget it was me that brought you up here, neither. Well, why didn't you say something? No, I did. <sighs> Gamblers, man. I should have known better. You just dug your own grave. Like I said, I can wait. I mean the GBH. I'm going to get some more details off the lad with the bloody nose. I want you to chase up the tube ticket. See if one of the others dropped it. It's date and timestamp, so you should be able to get something off the CCTV. Well, what about CID? I've told them we're keeping it. Why? I feel responsible. Is that because the wicked witches had a go at you? No, I just do. Well, I'll tell you what, I was there and I don't feel responsible, so you shouldn't. Well, I've told CID we're keeping it, so we are. Are you OK? I'm fine. You know this, you feeling responsible, you sure it's about the assault? I'm fine. So please, Des, just... see if the tube ticket gets us anywhere. The crux is that Sam had what they're calling a love child with Ian McCarthy. When he was released, he was given a new identity. I didn't know he was Ian McCarthy. But the press is saying that you did. That's not true. And they can't print that or sue. Wait a minute, before we start talking about suing, is the rest of it true? Well, I don't know what the rest of it is, sir. Is Ian McCarthy Abigail's father? Yes. Well, then substantially it is true. Well, that bit is, but that's none of their business. Ian McCarthy's notorious. Like it or not, he's tabloid property. The public don't forget. They're not allowed to forget. Either way, they don't. Ian McCarthy hasn't existed for 25 years. The man I knew had, and still has, another name. When I found out about him, I was already pregnant. But as soon as I did, I severed all connection with him. There's still a connection. Abigail. I'm sorry, Samantha. But this isn't the straightforward personal matter you'd like it to be. There are no discipline issues, sir. I wasn't a police officer. But there are other issues, like how it reflects on the service. If they pursue the story in the way that Jack's saying, the police officer and the murderer, well, I'm sorry, but that's a problem. But I don't think they can print that, sir. They can't disclose Ian McCarthy's new identity, and Abigail is underage, so they can't invade her privacy. Without those angles, there is no story. I still have to speak to the borough commander, and you should consider some time off. I won't let them intimidate me out of my job. It's a question of whether you can do your job, whether they'll let you. Stories like this have a way of gathering momentum, and the issue's a welfare one. Can you cope? What they're saying isn't true. I didn't know he was Ian McCarthy, and even if I did, I wasn't a police officer. You still haven't answered the question. Yes, I can handle it. Because I refuse to be a victim of this. Hello, Paul. I wasn't sure if I had the right address. What do you want? How's the nose? Been better. I need to go over some of the details about what happened last night. All right. The other lad was pretty badly injured. Did you ever see or hear from your friends again? They're not my friends. I don't know them. Are you sure about that? I know who my friends are. So who were you with last night, then? I was on the pool. I wasn't with anyone. Look, I've got two sons. When they go out in the pool, they do it with a bunch of them. The girls think it's a bit weird a bloke completely on his own. I wasn't on my own. There was a couple of fellas there I latched on to, like... Were these the fellas you were outside the two angels with? No, inside. I don't know the ones outside. The ones that attacked you? I don't know, do I? So, inside the two angels, you're on the pole with a bunch of lads you don't know. Then you're outside with some other lads you don't know. Then another bunch of lads you don't know attacked you. That's about the size of it. Gav. Either. Ken met up with Phil. He spent the evening playing cards with the Fosters. Did he learn anything about what they're planning for the warehouse? Yeah, Phil's all excited. Someone called Nikitsa Severich was there. And he's been out to Vienna recently, so Phil rang his customers' contacts, and not only is Severich known to them, but Vienna is the gateway to Eastern Europe. And? 
And there's a car shortage in the former Eastern Block. They're awash with cash, but there just aren't enough flash motors to spend it on. Sorry. Hello? Yeah? OK. What time? Uh, we might be a little late. No, Glenn, I'm not trying to get out of it. I'm just saying I might be a bit late. OK? Sorry, Eva. How's it all going? Well, that reporter got to the DCI and now the super wants me to take time off. Oh, a couple of days wouldn't hurt. Oh, yes, it would. They've moved the goalposts. Now it's about whether I can do my job under pressure. Can you? Well, um, come in. I've agreed to let Glenn and Abigail meet. So once that's out of the way, yeah, I think I can. All right. Jump in? No, I'm going to work. Jump in anyway. No, I've got no money, pal. Just get in the car. If I was out to mug you, I'd have done it by now. Next thing is, I'll get a telephone call from my daughter. And she's not very happy with me. Not very happy at all. She thinks I'm the reason that her husband was out all night and why she didn't get her tea and toast in bed this morning. But, of course, I can't be, can I? Cos he left here with you. But Mr Foster, I've got no idea... He did leave here with you, didn't he? I'm not imagining things. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, unless I'm missing something, <laughs> makes you the last person to see my beloved son-in-law. He'll probably show up at work. Where do you think he is? I don't know. He said he was going home. Are you hard of hearing or something? That's the point. He didn't get there. Look, when we left, we had a few words and he walked off. What few words did you have? Well, he was angry with me for uh, crashing the car game. Go on. He said it was private. But I followed him. Do you make it a habit of going to parties you're not invited to? I just love gambling. Yeah. You're not betting on my soft nature now, are you, Ken? No. No. Cos if you are, if it turns out you know what's happened to him and haven't told me, you will pay very dearly. Now, on the other hand, if you know what's happened, I'll be quite happy to reward you for sharing it. I don't know where Sid is. I haven't seen him since we left here this morning. Vince? No, Vince, I wanted your opinion. I don't like him. What do you want me to say, eh? I hardly know the bloke. All right, Nakutsa. Put him back where you found him. The young probationers, they tend to go over the top of it, you know, they try to assert themselves physically. Well, I'm not young, am I? Uh, no. In that case, you should take the leaf out of my book. Yeah, use your personality, you know, use your character. Yes. It gets you back over respect. With Reg, oh, the new probationer. What's his name? Uh, Gabriel Kent. Thanks. Well, I'm telling you. Hey, Reggie, babe, I want you to have a look at this, see if you recognise anyone from outside the Angel last night. Well, what you got? CCTV pictures of where the uh, ticket was bought. Uh, no, not you, Sunshine. I was there. You've got to do it one at a time. Can't have you influencing each other, can we? Hey, that's definitely him. Yeah, I moved him on last night. I saw the two angels. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, you better write it up then, haven't you? Yeah, well. Why is Gabriel standing sentry over there and you two have scrolled away in here? What's going on, ladies? Uh, well, uh, Mum, we're IDing faces that were involved in the GBH last night. Who for? That should be the CID by now. Who's it assigned to? You're supposed to be watching the bloody building. Ken, you haven't clocked back on yet and neither has Sid. Sid's vanished. 
That's what the Fosters wanted to talk to me about. Vanished? What do you mean, vanished? What do you think I mean? As in, no one knows where he is. The Fosters think I might have something to do with it. Well, what'd you say to them? I told them I had no idea. Would they believe you? Yes! As luck would have it. Seeing as I had no backup, I want backup. I thought they'd rumbled me. Why well, you said vanished then? I want reliable backup! Yeah, all right, I'll speak to the DI. What if they had rumbled me, eh? Well, did they? Did you do or say anything that might have made them think so? Well, stop whinging then, will you? You chose to do this job. Just get on with it. No, 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 no. You chose it for me. Remember. And just stop whinging anyway. It's so unattractive. <laughs> Oi, let me know if Sid shows up. You know the difference between you and the Fosters? No can tell me. When I think of one, I'll let you know. Why are you doing CRD's work? Do you mean the GBH? I do. It's just that uniform are involved from the start. I thought it'd be more effective. Tying up three officers is not effective. Three? Des and Reg and Gabriel. I only tasked Des. I just wanted to see it through, ma'am. I can see that, but why? I, I just did. Is that bothering you? No. Why? Well, you're not sharp as usual. Everything right at home? Yeah. Right. Then do what you should have done in the first place and send it up to CID, all right? Was she having a pop with you again? Oh, Des. How did I get to this ripe old age without you looking out for me, eh? It's a total mystery to me. What are you doing outside? I felt claustrophobic. Hello, Abby. Abigail? Mum. Abigail. The, uh, the table's booked. They gave us a quiet one, but I fancied a walk first. They'll hold it for us. I, um, don't think a walk's a good idea. You think you've been followed? I made sure I wasn't. I'll be honest. This is difficult for me. I guess it is for you, too. So I thought we could walk, talk, you know, get some of the awkwardness out of the way and then sit down. Yeah. A walk would be nice. Glenn. Cautious is good, Samantha. Scared isn't. Just a short stroll. Getting this right is important. Paul Avlov. Yeah? We need to check the description of one of the lads that attacked you last night. Not again. To be honest, mate, I'm not bothered. Well, we are about the other lad. What am I supposed to do about it? Can I come in? Thank you. Right. We've got a description of one of the lads you were with. I told you before, I wasn't with anyone. He was white, five foot ten, had a denim jacket, grey sweatshirt and dark hair. Ring any bells? No. Possibly lives or works near Barking. No. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. For now. Right. If you uh, see any of those lads again, you will let us know. They're not my mates. I didn't say they were. I just said if you see them again. Any joy? He knows we haven't got anything. Someone was peeking out the window while you were inside. Where? Up there. Right. Where are you going? Out of sight, out of mind. Come on.
not so bad when you're on your own, are you? I've just clicked. It's you. Sorry? I was, um, I was attacked in the street. You stopped to help me. I think you must have the wrong fella. No, no, about six weeks ago. I could have sworn it was you. P.C. Gabriel Kent. Sergeant June Ackland. Honestly, I think I would have remembered. So now you know about me, what about you? You married? Uh, girlfriend, yes. Married, no. OK. Any other children? No. Uh, can we have a Coke and two glasses of white wine, please? Of course. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Um, lots of reasons. Just never happened. Is it because of what you did? Maybe. Can you ever lead a normal life after doing something like that? It's on its way. It's a 4999. Right. Sierra Oscar from 416. Can I have a registered keeper for index Mike 251 Lima Tango Hotel? Over. He's alive. He's it. He's it. I need a dressing for him. Did you see it? No, I just heard a crash. It's like I completely missed a turn. He must have been doing some. Any news on the ambulance? Registered keeper of vehicle index Mike 251 Lima Tango Hotel is a Sydney right of 258 Benton Close, over. Any news on the ambulance? Gabriel, come on. And you know what, Bernie? I'm going to get my over here. I'm not finished with you yet! I don't want to prosecute. He assaulted you. But I'm not the victim. I'm never the victim. Glenn, he assaulted you. Oh, think it through. Ian McCarthy prosecutes Stuart Marshall's uncle. The papers didn't have a field day. Mm. Have a go. I know it went wrong this time, but I want you to know where I am. You can get in touch whenever you want. How can you say that? After what just happened? Excuse me. Yes, Hunter. Second. Cheers. What happened? She's doing it. Oh, sitting there's part of something I've been working on. He's been able till now. Oh. Yeah, well, the uh, security guard radioed it in. He didn't see anything. We still don't know what happened. Right. Well, that's strange. It looks like he floored it. That's what I said. Gov, Sid Wright just totaled his car and himself with it. He's in intensive care. Well, that takes away the whole point of our surveillance. We've lost our target. I say we pull Ken out. No way, Gov. It's a washout, Phil. I'd say the opposite. I'd say it's heating up. Something's gone down with Sid and the Fosters are worried. They've just pulled Ken off the street and given him the third degree. Why would they do that if they weren't up to something? Well, if they've questioned Ken, even more reason to wind it up. For Ken's safety, if nothing else. You've never been committed to this. I'm warning you. You've crossed the line. What line? The line where I care about getting a result. I've busted my guts getting it this far. Now you want to pull the plug? If it's going nowhere, yes, I do. Why? Because it weren't your idea. You went over my head. I went to the DCI because you were too busy sorting your personal life out. I'm going to ignore that, Phil. 
Michael being an absentee manager is one thing, Gav. But if you want to undermine what we've done in the meantime, you can have a fight on your hands. As of tomorrow, I'm putting you on something else. If you don't like it, tough. Rob, sign there. Desmond. Mum. The dividing line between outright disobedience and commendable initiative depends on one thing. In charge as we speak. Very pleased to hear it. Mum. Sheila. Mum. Why didn't you tell me you were still working the GBH? Because you've told me to stop. That's right, and there's something else too. What's that? I don't want my private life and the job being mixed up, and I don't want you doing things for me just because it's me. So what do you want? I don't feel comfortable with this, Des. Not with us or what happened or how I feel. So? So when it spills into my work or home, I can't handle it. Well, look, no spills. Steady as a rock. I do need a bit of fun in my life, though. Right. Just a fella. <laughs> I'm knackered and I'm going home. What do you want? I thought you said you wanted more protection. Oh, very funny. What is it? Sid's been in a car crash. What? Full tilt into a lamppost. He's in intensive care. What did he say anything? No, he's still unconscious. The crime scene investigators think it's suspicious. His brakes have been tampered with. You're joking. Now, the DI thinks we should call it off. She reckons whatever Sid was going to do, he ain't going to do it for a while. She doesn't think we should carry on. That's it, then? No. I think we should keep going. I think you should develop your in with the Fosters. Is that why you're creeping around? You want to keep me on side? No, I've came here to tell you about Sid. So now you told me. So now I'm going over. What the? Your brake's not working, or what? I, I, what's going on? What's going on? Now you know what this is, don't you? So shut up. Take his car. Oh. I'll see you back there. Stay down. We need to know what you know. About what? Guess. I can't. What have you found out, Ken? A Lamborghini Diablo costs about 190 grand. We know you're a copper. You what? What do you know, Mr. Policeman? Yeah, all right, all right. So I'm a copper, all right? I've got a few problems. I, I, uh, I've got a few debts, gambling debts, you know, and I... That's why I'm moonlighting with a security company. I, look, I, I, I borrowed some money off a guy at work and they frown upon that kind of thing, so... That's why I'm working every hour God sends to pay it off. You didn't tell us about your two families, did you, Ken? That must put a strain on your finances. Yeah. It's hard keeping secrets nowadays. I really don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> so, what are you doing here? Page nine. As yet. The borough commander rang me at home. They've hung the story on the back of the relative who attacked your ex today. In the presence of a police officer who is the mother of Ian McCarthy's child. I have to question your judgment, Samantha. Why meet the man when you're under all this scrutiny? What I do on my own time, sir, is my own business. <laughs> not now, it isn't. I didn't know this would happen. You created the opportunity. Well, not intentionally. It's in the paper. That requires a different approach. Take some time off, Samantha, and decide what you're going to do. Time off? No, sir. 
I strongly advise it. You said this was purely a welfare issue. It was. But you seem hell-bent on giving yourself aggravation with the service. I stand by what I said earlier. I don't need to run and hide. This is not about hiding. It's about managing that. Because it won't remain on page nine. Not if you carry on like this. This always works. You ready? All right! Okay! We were investigating an armed robbery. Cash in transit. We interviewed all the employees of the security firm, including Sid Wright. Go on. Well, we figured he was... He was planning something. What? Oh, it don't take a genius to work out it was a car. And who were the faces? Who were the faces? You both were! You and your dad! All right, boys. Did you turn, Sid? No. Don't matter if you did, he didn't know much. We didn't. No. You all right don't hospitalise witnesses, do you? Yeah, but now he's a witness. What'd you show your face for? He knows who we are. He don't know much, but he knows that. Well, that makes him a problem. A big one. Are you a problem, DC Drummond? Or are you a solution opportunity? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you any use to us? Or do we kill you? Next time on The Bill. Only one in five jobs makes you any money. So I work being a gangster these days, isn't it? She's your mother. She's the one who's been there for you. Yeah, but only because you didn't know I existed. You're insane. Do you want to be next? Well, do you?